What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's going to be a very quick one. Just want to give you the official announcement that WordPress 5.0 will be released on December 6th. As of this recording, we are recording on December 4th. So that means that this update is taking place in just two days. I'll be releasing an article on my website, pixelmerb.com, with some tips and tricks and advice that you should take before updating to WordPress 5.0, aka Gutenberg. So definitely look out for that article. Now also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. On this channel, I provide tips and tricks on how to code your very own WordPress theme, plugins, how to manage a WordPress powered website, along with other tips and tricks for coders, vloggers, and bloggers. So definitely subscribe if you're not already part of our community. Now the official announcement can be seen here and I'll leave a link to this in the description area down below. Let's scroll down here. It says new 5.0 target date based on the stability testing and reports on the release candidates for WordPress 5.0 so far. They're targeting Thursday, December 6th for the public release and announcement. Now they're also coming out with 5.0.1 as well. But that's going to come at a later date. Now on this article, it gives you some more information. So definitely check it out. It even says if you don't want to update or if you're not ready, you shouldn't feel compelled to do so. What I do normally recommend updating to the newest versions of WordPress or any themes or plugins that you might have sometimes, and this is one of those occasions, you may want to hold off on updating or upgrading. This is a major release. It's a major update. And while the usability team and the testing team at WordPress has been very hard at work, it's possible that something might not function properly. So this is a very busy time for a lot of websites. We're in the holiday shopping season and every single minute counts when it comes to making money online. So if you're concerned about what this upgrade or update might do to your website, you might want to hold off. That being said, I do have other videos where I demonstrated how to use Gutenberg along with some other tips and tricks as well. So definitely check those out. They'll be up in the cards and down in the description area below. Now, if you do want to update, but you don't want to use the Gutenberg editor, you could always install the classic editor plugin. So definitely check that out as well. Now, going on to another popular website, Yoast.com, they released an article talking about should you update to WordPress 5.0. And in this article, they also mentioned the fact that maybe now is not the right time. Have you tested your website to make sure it works with Gutenberg? Do you know if your WordPress theme is compatible? And what about your suite of plugins? Are they compatible with Gutenberg? Yoast SEO is compatible, but some other plugins might not be fully compatible yet. And obviously that's why it's important to have a staging environment or a testing environment where you can see whether or not the plugins and the themes that you're using function well with Gutenberg. And in previous videos, I demonstrate how to go about doing that. So Yoast SEO, Yoast.com, they put out a very good article. I'll link to this down in the description area as well. They do make point of the fact that they believe Gutenberg and WordPress 5.0 is an improvement and it opens up a world of opportunity. But obviously you want to test things out. If you go to this website here, wordpress.org forward slash Gutenberg, you can actually play around with the new editor without using it directly on your website. That way you get a good feel of it and see if it's something that makes sense for you right now. Now again, this is just the editor. This is not going to check the compatibility of your themes and plugins. This is just to give yourself a test run with the editor itself. Now you can go over to uh, github.com forward slash WordPress forward slash Gutenberg and you can take a look at what issues might be taking place. You can click on the issues tab over here and you can see what open issues still exist and see if any may pertain to your type of website and you can see what issues are closed as well. So I'll leave a link to this in the description area below. Now this is the uh, page right here for the Gutenberg plugin. Currently in WordPress 4.9.8, it is a plugin, which means you have to install it and test it out. I do recommend testing this on a local server environment and I don't recommend installing Gutenberg plugin on a production website. This is more for testing and for learning how to work with the editor before it's officially released with WordPress 5.0. If you do upgrade to WordPress 5.0 but don't want to use Gutenberg, you will be able to install the classic editor plugin itself. 
this is a way for you to have the best of both worlds. You'll have the upgrade, so any other additional features or functionality that WordPress is going to be incorporating, you'll benefit from that. But you'll still have the classic editor, which should definitely make life a little bit easier in the short term. Now, one thing you definitely have to do is back up your website. You should back up your files, your folders, and your database. This is going to be vital, especially if you're going to be doing the update. One tool that I like using is FileZilla. You can get it over here at FileZilla-Project.org. Download the version for your operating system. And I have a video on how to use this, and I'll leave a link to that as well. But basically, this is a way for you to download from your web server all the files and folders on your website. Now remember, this is for files and folders. This is not for your posts and your pages and custom post types. Those live inside of the database. So if you need to download a copy of your database, you would log into your web server account, go to your control panel, and you'll most often see something like PHP MyAdmin. From there, you can export your database. Go over here, I'll demonstrate it here. Right now I'm on my local environment, but it's a similar process. You click on the export tab right here, and then click on custom. You want to make sure you're in SQL format, and you want to make sure that all your tables are selected. Scroll down. For compression, choose zipped. Then scroll all the way down, and then click on go. And now you have a zip file of your WordPress database. So FileZilla is good to get your files and folders, and phpMyAdmin from your web server is a good way to export your database. Now, obviously, being WordPress, there's a plugin that streamlines the whole entire process. There's actually a bunch of plugins. There's a duplicator plugin, and I have a video on that. You should definitely check that out. And that could be used as a backup solution. There's Updraft Plus, which is a very popular plugin. And some of these make it possible for you to package up your files, your folders, and your database, and have a very easy way to get your website back up to date in case you need to do so. Again, I'm over here on my local installation. What I'll do is I'll just demonstrate the installation of a backup plugin. You go to plugins, add new. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to type out back WP up, I believe it is. Yes, we're going to go for this one right here. You can click on more details. It's a very good plugin. I'll just install it now. And once it's installed, you can click on activate, then you can go to your dashboard. Now what I'll do here is just demonstrate how to download a copy of your database. You can do a one click backup over here. And now you have that SQL file there as well. Now, in order to get back up and running, if for whatever reason your website goes down, you would use FileZilla to upload your files and folders back to your web server. And let's go over here. I'm going to show you the front of this site very quickly. You see we have the hello world post there and we have some other demonstration posts here. So what I'm going to do here is just demonstrate an issue where your database for some reason or another was deleted, corrupted, or needed to be replaced. So I'm going to drop the database here. Now, this is on my local web server environment. This is not something you should do on your production server. This is just for demonstration purposes so I can show you how to reinstall or recreate your database. So over here, I'll click on OK. So now that database no longer exists, I'll go over here, click on Reload, Error Establishing a Database Connection. All right, so from here, I'm going to pretend that I already uploaded my files and folders using FileZilla. I'm going to go back here, recreate the database, and then I'm going to import the database. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose the file that we downloaded before. Click on Open, scroll down, then click on Go. All right, so now it says the import has been successfully finished. Let's go back here. Reload our browser. And we are back in business. You see we have the hello world post there again. And the blog post that we previously had. 
All right, so that's a very quick demonstration of how to reinstall your database using PHP My Admin. You would again get to that via your web server or your web hosting account. Go to your control panel and look for PHP My Admin. For FileZilla, you would need to download this onto your computer and then you would connect to your web server and those credentials you get again from your web server control panel. And I do have a video demonstrating that as well. So you have a manual approach to downloading your WordPress files and folders and your database. And you have the automated approach or the plugin route using a backup plugin. Whichever way you choose to go, I definitely recommend taking a full backup of your database and your WordPress files and folders. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to mention that on December 6th, this Thursday, WordPress 5.0 is going to be released. Gutenberg is just around the corner, two days away as of this recording. That means you should definitely prep your website and web server for this update taking place. Take a full backup of your website. If you want to test out your website to see if it works well, I have some videos that go deeper into Gutenberg itself. I have uh, this video over here. WordPress 5.0 Gutenberg release date. That was the older video and that one had a different projected release date, but I go over some of the information there as well. Then I also have this video here where I demonstrate how to utilize Gutenberg and to make sure your website works. And I also have this video here that talks about Gutenberg and page builders like Elementor, Divi and others. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that notification icon, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.